Uh, yeah, yeah, that place. Questions for coach? What is that? Uh, the challenge on day one back from <laughs> spring break? It, it seemed like they were locked in pretty yeah, good. Yeah, they were but... locked in pretty good. Well, you know, intentionally we didn't practice yesterday. We got them back in here and, and ran them and lifted them yesterday. And then today was uh, an opportunity to come out here. They really kind of picked up where they left off. I thought. I thought it was a good energy, good, good, good job with the guys coming back, being focused. You know, not not much distraction out here on the field. Not loud, lollygagging around. Paying attention, locked in, and doing what they're supposed to do to get better today. I thought it was a good, solid practice. Sounded like you had a lot of guys stick around. We did and not take. What does that tell you yeah. about the commitment level that yeah. you didn't mm -hmm. end practice oh, yeah. last Thursday, or, you know, last Friday or Thursday, and everybody leaves? Yeah, I was talking to Fletch about that. He was he mentioned that actually. He's like, Coach, we got a lot of guys just hanging around here, coming in, getting treatment, um, you know, trying to better themselves. We had several guys that when they when they did leave, they didn't go to, you know, Cancun or where they went. They went and trained somewhere. They went and trained down in Texas, down in Florida. I mean, which was great to see and. It just tells you their commitment to try to get better as an individual, and ultimately that'll help us as a football team. But you know, really like where our, our guys are in a, in a great headspace right now. They just want to keep getting better, and they're helping each other, and that's what I like to see. What can you learn about specifically the quarterback position in the spring? Well, we've thrown a lot at him right now. Uh, today, the defense, you know, brought us some zero pressures. You know, first time since since we started practicing this spring, and so. Whoever's in the game, we, you know, you got a great idea about where are they going to go with the football. And, you know, if they're back there holding the ball, getting sacked, obviously they don't have a plan. So, you know, everybody's getting reps. They're all getting their opportunities. Um, we're grading everything, you know, um, accuracy, um, you know, where's the ball placement, what's your knowledge of the play. So they're all getting that opportunity, you know, and at the end of this thing, we'll see where everybody stands. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, the receiver core compared to last spring, we're way ahead of that, you know, where we were last spring. But, you know, a guy like, you know, Tony Johnson who just got here, I think, you know, the, the quarterbacks feel real comfortable about him coming in and making plays. They already feel good with X, obviously. I, I think Barry Jackson's another guy that's played well. AT's had a pretty good four days. Uh, you know, so Sterling Burkhall has had, had a good four days. I mean, so I think for them, the quarterbacks really, you know, they just want to know where they're going to be and where the route is and then come in there and make a play. And, and I think, um, you know, Masari uh, had a good touchdown here in a, in a two-minute scenario. That's a great play by him. So um, I think more than anything, they, they're gaining trust from the receivers because they're making plays for them down the field. How do you ju judge a guy like Masari that comes in as a walk-on? Yeah. All four days he's made mm -hmm. plays. It looks like the quarterbacks trust him. He has. Yeah, well, you know, Masari was spent last year down on the scout team and, and did a great job all last year. Um, I think he really gained a lot of confidence, and then he came in this off season. You know, he didn't—he didn't, he don't care how he got here. You know, he just wants to get on that field, and I think he—that's what he's been able to show. Is like, you guys can trust me. If I'm going to run the right route, you throw me the ball, I'm going to catch it, and that's what he does. Um, a little bit unassuming when you walk up on him and look at him, you say, "Man, you—you know—you you play some football," but he can. Um, really excited about him. I love his attitude. Love where he's at. You've kind of elaborated on this before when we talked to you, but kind of personally for you, when comparing this time of year to past seasons, knowing what happened last season, is there a little extra oomph of you really looking forward to just getting back on the field this year? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, to me, it's not necessarily in the fall. It's like right now, I, you know, because after the end of the season last year, we couldn't wait to get back out here and start working. And and that's kind of been the mindset of our guys. Like, they just couldn't wait to get back to work. And they started in January and February, and, and now be able to actually practice. You just, it's just a different feel. Um, very, everybody's very intentional about getting out here, getting better. Um, you know, you're training with an edge, you're training with a pissed off mentality. And I think, you know, even though we've added, you know, 30 players, um, they've come in and kind of adhered to that same mentality just because that's the, the bulk of the team is, is, is like that. So um, I think that's a really good thing. You know, I think mean, obviously if you're training with that, that kind of chip on your shoulder, you're trying to prove something and uh, it's going to make you better. And Joey Belgian is a guy that a lot of fans might not know about. He's sat out all this season yeah. with the injury. What should they expect from him? Yeah, yeah, Joey, you know, ends up you know hurting his knee, had surgery and missed all last year. Um, He's a, he's a guy with great size, but, he, but, he, but he's very nimble on his feet. He's got really good hands, had a couple of nice catches out here today. Um, you know, I, I feel really good about that tight end room, man. I mean, you know, we were, we're way ahead from last year with the guys that we brought in, the guys that are, you know, the two freshmen we brought in, Joey's back, Joe Royer. I mean, we got, we got a, a really good room there, and they're all competing against each other, and they're helping each other. Very similar to the quarterback room. You know, we got several guys that are competing, and that tight end room is very similar. We uh, haven't talked to you since the announcement that New Heights is doing a live show from here, April 11th. Yeah. 
you get to have those two guys not just do that, but be around yeah. your program. Oh yeah. Uh, what have you got any reaction from the guys about knowing that those guys are going to be yeah, here? Yeah, I mean, be I think uh, it's just that's really cool, really awesome. You know, particularly, I mean, these two guys are you know at the height really of their careers right now, and really all the notoriety they've been able to accomplish um, this past year. Um, for them to come back, they're you know bringing some of the most well-known Bearcats, you know. To come back here and hang out for a few days and to, and to put on that podcast, man, we're excited about it. We're, you know, can't wait to get them here and, and certainly uh, let them talk to the team and hang out with our guys a little bit and, uh, you know, and, and just so they can share their knowledge from the time that they were here back when they were playing and to where they are right now and how they've continued to get better and better each and every year. And that's that's really cool to have those guys be able to come back. You haven't met either yet. I've not just talked to them, you know, through text, but not 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 in person. So I'm looking forward to meeting them. Is there a specific message or something that you hope the two future Pro Football Hall of Famers give to your team? Well, that, that, you know, nothing's easy. You know, one comes as a walk-on, the other one was kicked off the team. You know, and now they're two of the best at, ever at their position in the NFL. So, you know, if, if it tells you anything, it tells you just keep your head down and just work your tail off. And I'm sure that's their message, you know. And, uh, you know, it, it was it was nothing that I – mean, at that point in time, I bet if you ask them where if they ended up like this, you'd be like, there ain't no way. You know, but now look at them. And, you know, one of them was the, maybe the best center ever played, and one of them was the best tight end ever played, and Dayton maybe the most popular musician in the world right now. So <laughs> uh, it's kind of cool to be able to come back here and let them tell a few stories to our guys. You a big Taylor Swift guy? Uh, not really. I mean, I, you know, I listen to I can be. music a, a little bit. I got a daughter, so she really liked her. She went and saw her in concert. But, uh, but you know, so every now and again, it, it plays a little bit throughout the house. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate it. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate it.